We're close to finishing up chapter seven, which has been all about exponentials and logarithmic equations. There is one more type of log that we need to learn about, and that is our natural log. So we've already talked about common logs, which have a base of 10, and we've talked about other logs that have bases of different numbers. Natural logs specifically have a base of E. E referring to Euler's number. This is an irrational constant, so a number that never ends, like pi. It starts with 2.718281828, but then it keeps going on and on and on and doesn't actually repeat anymore. So we use an E to represent the number instead. So these are specifically logs that have this base of E. Their other name is natural log. So on your calculator and in your book, rather than writing log base E every time, we represent this with LN. And you should look at your calculator and notice that LN button located right next to the log button. That's the one that we'll be using in this section. We can do everything with natural logs that we did with common logs. So for example, we can go from exponential to log form and vice versa. So let's go ahead and do an example of each of those. So moving back and forth between the different forms. So let's say, for example, we start with e to the x equals 8. That would be exponential form. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it into log form. You can still use the little loop trick that we used in the other sections to know what order to write it in. So for this one, it would be log base E. Remember, that's where you start. And then the 8 would be next to that. And it's going to be equal to the thing that your arrow points at, which in this case is X. Now, because we wrote log base E, we would change just that part of it to LN just to make it a little bit shorter to write. So your answer for this one would be LN of 8 equals X. So that is us taking it from our exponential form and getting it into natural log form. Let's do an example where we go backwards. So let's actually start with one that is in log form. So log, uh, natural log of 10 equals X. So now we're going backwards. We're gonna to try to go from log to exponential form. The first thing you would probably want to re or like rewrite with this one because there's nothing written here is I would change the ln into log e. That way now I can use my loop trick like before and to make this exponential you start with where your arrow started so e the power is the thing that you pass next so x equals 10 which is the thing that your arrow points to. Now that we know how to do that, the next thing we wanna practice is applying the properties of logs to natural logs. So those properties that we learned, which was the quotient property, the product property, and the power property, those can all be applied to natural logs as well. So for this next set of examples, we are going to write as a single log. So we're going to try to apply those properties to some natural logs. Okay, so for this first example, let us try to rewrite three natural log of 10 minus the natural log of eight. So right now you can see that this is two separate logs. We want to rewrite it as just a single log in our answer. So you think about what properties we can use. I see a number out front of the natural log. Remember when you have a coefficient, you can move that back into being an exponent in your problem. So this is actually the same thing as the natural log of 10 cubed minus the natural log of eight. Then you can go so far as to actually go ahead and do 10 cubed. So the 10 cubed is a thousand. So natural log of a thousand minus natural log of eight. Now we still have two logs in our problem but I see that they are separated with subtraction, which lets me know that I should be using the quotient property. The quotient property is when you write log once, but then you combine the other numbers using division. 
1000 divided by eight actually works out evenly. So, and if it didn't, I would definitely still want to simplify it, but that works out to the natural log of 125. This is a pretty good answer right here. Technically, you can simplify it even more because 125 can be written as a number with exponents. Natural log of 125 is the same thing as five cubed. So then if I was writing this, I could move the three out front and my final answer would be three natural log of five. But if you write natural log 125, you would maybe only lose one point. It's just because you can go a little bit further, you should, but that is not always the case. Let's do one more example like that. Let's rewrite natural log of 40 plus two natural log of one half plus natural log of X. And let's try to get that into a single log. So remember the property you should always start with is the product property. So if you see a coefficient, send that back into being an exponent first. So this is actually one half squared, which is the same thing as one fourth. Now, all of these are being combined with addition, which lets me know that I should be using the product property. So this is the same thing as ln of 40 times 1 fourth, and again, I got that from 1 half squared, times x. I can simplify the 40 times 1 fourth, which would give me 10. So this is the same thing as ln of 10x. Now on this one, I can't do anything like in the last problem where I rewrite it with exponents because 10 cannot be rewritten with exponents in any way. So that is just my answer right there. Now, if you wanted to check this in your calculator, for the second one, you would have to pick a number for x because they don't give you anything. But like for the first example where they actually give you everything, you can type the original problem in your calculator and you would use that LN button, not the log button, and you would end up getting 4.828, and then it's gonna keep going. These are always gonna give you horrible decimals since E is an irrational number. And then you can also type your answer in and make sure it matches. So your original problem has to match your answer if you type it in your calculator. Now the last thing we wanna be able to do is actually solve equations and inequalities. So I'm gonna to to go through a few more examples, bear with me. Honestly, your work today is just like purely mathematical. You have one word problem in the, today's homework and I just wanna see if you're able to apply what you learned to solve that on your own. But let's practice solving some equations and inequalities. So for this first one, we have four e to the negative two x minus five is equal to three. So the only exponent is the negative two x. Please be careful, the e is not a variable. The e is Euler's number, that's that constant. So we're still just trying to solve for x. The first thing you would wanna do in these problems is isolate your Euler's number so get that e to whatever power by itself first. So in this one, I would need to do that by first adding five to both sides, and then dividing by four to get rid of that coefficient. So e to the negative two x is equal to two. Now that I'm here, this is in the problems that we were doing before, the step where we would take the log of both sides, However, now because we're working with E, you would wanna take the natural log of both sides to get rid of the E. So we need to take the natural log of the left and the natural log of the right. Now on the left-hand side, the LN and the E cancel out and I'm just left with negative two X. And on the right-hand side, I still have the natural log of two. That doesn't cancel out. Then to get X by itself, I would need to divide by negative two. So what you should be typing in your calculator to get X is this right here. So you would punch LN two, close the parentheses that are there, divided by negative two, and the answer you should get for this one is negative 0 0.3466. 
And again, you are always going to get decimal answers for these problems since E is an irrational number. Let's go through uh, one more problem that's like that, and then we'll do two inequality examples. For this one, I would pause the video and see if it's making sense. Try to solve this one on your own. So we have three times the natural log of four X equals 24. Start by isolating your E. So in this case, we, or start by isolating your natural log, which is similar to your E. So let's say isolate E or LN as our first step. So for this one, I'm going to start by dividing by three. So that leaves me with the LN of four X equals eight. Now this is going to be similar to what we did in the first example, but rather than taking the natural log of both sides, we need to figure out how to get that to cancel out. So the way we do that is we take E and we raise it to this on the left and we take E and we raise it to this on the right. So now those are actually exponents. What that does is on the left hand side, it cancels out the E with the LN, leaving us only with 4X. And on the right hand side, I have E to the eighth power. Then I would need to divide both sides by four. So to get this in my calculator, I need to type e to the eighth divided by four. Your button for Euler's number to a power is second ln. So if you look at that, it's gonna look like e to the x. So you should type second ln and then punch in the eight for the exponent. Make sure to tab over so you're not in the exponent anymore and hit divided by four. And for this one, you should get 745.2395. Please make sure you understand how to cite this in the calculator. And if you don't, make sure to set up a meeting time with me where we can go through it together and I can make sure that you're pressing the right buttons. Let's do two last examples. These ones are specifically going to be over inequalities. It's the same process as before, but now an inequality symbol in your problem. Okay, so this one, we're gonna do the natural log of x minus eight to the fourth power is less than four. Okay, right now, my first step should be to isolate either the E if it's an exponential problem or the natural log if it's a log problem. This one, the LN is already, um, it's already by itself, so I don't need to do anything just yet. So what I would want to do is take each side and do Euler's number raised to the power of what's in the problem. So this one's like double exponents on the left. On the right hand side, I would have e to the fourth. Now on the left hand side, the e raised to the ln will cancel out, just leaving me with x minus eight to the fourth is less than e to the fourth. Now this is one of our exponent rules. If we have a four over here and four over here, we can just ignore those, leaving us with x minus eight is less than e. I would need to add eight to both sides. So x is less than e plus eight. Please do not leave your answer in that format. E is a constant, so you need to actually type that in your calculator. So find your e button, which, let me look at my calculator. The E button without the exponent, you should be pressing second divide. So for this one, you would hit second divide. And then that's going to pull up E and then you would type plus eight and then hit enter. And you should get that X is less than 10.7183. I think they have you rounding to four decimal points in each problem. Let's do one more inequality, but starting with, actually, I think I have mine starting with another natural log. So for this last one, let's do the natural log of 2x minus 3 cubed is greater than 6. The natural log is already by itself, so I would need to take E raised to both sides, so the natural log of 2x minus 3 
cubed is greater than e to the sixth power. That's why you're not changing anything. If you put the e on both sides, your equation is equivalent. The e and the natural log will cancel out on the left, leaving me with 2x minus 3 cubed is greater than e to the sixth. How would I get rid of this cube here? To get rid of cubes, we would have to take a cube root. Anything you do to one side, do to the other. So then at this point, I'm left with just 2x minus 3. And on the right-hand side, remember your rules with roots. If I have a cube root of e to the 6, that's like the same thing as e to the 6 divided by 3. So that's the same thing as e squared. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. You shouldn't type in the e and get a decimal until the very last step. Then to finish this, I would have to add 3 to both sides and then divide by 2. So to type this in my calculator, I'm going to do this whole thing on the right. I would put first parentheses, then I would need to type second divide to get the e. Or actually for that one, I would probably use just like the second law or second natural law to get the e to the x. So it'll save me a step. So let me do parentheses. And then I'm going to do second ln. Then I'm going to type in my two. I'm going to tab over and type plus three, close my parentheses, and then do divided by two. And I should get that x is greater than 5.1945. So the hardest thing about this is making sure you're comfortable typing it in your calculator. So if you're having any problems, let's set up a meeting to work together. And you can also email me if you have any questions I can answer through email.